As someone who has seen firsthand the struggles patients face in navigating care and the burnout clinicians and staff experience due to unstandardized one-to-one conversations, our next guest knew something had to change. Megan Necrobecki, CEO of Healthcare Transformation, joins us to discuss her passion for finding solutions to systemic healthcare challenges and how her team at HCT is revolutionizing the way care is delivered through innovative digital video technology. Join us to learn how Megan and the HCT team are not only making healthcare more effective and efficient for patients, but also reducing burnout and improving the overall experience for clinicians and staff by implementing asynchronous video technology. Let's go. Welcome to Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli, where we highlight and speak with the innovators, the game changers, and the pioneers who are deeply passionate and relentless in solving the problems our world is facing today. This is your opportunity to connect with and learn from these leaders and to support them on their mission. Perhaps they will soon be hearing your story as well. This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you on this journey with us. Hi, Megan. A big, big welcome to our podcast. Hi, Mike. Thanks so much for having me. Well, given your passion and expertise in healthcare systems improvement, analytics, value-based care, population health, and digital marketing, and the company you have built to solve big problems in our industry, I'm fired up to have this conversation with you today. But before we dive in, a bit of housekeeping. While listening to any of our episodes, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast so you will automatically receive episode updates in your podcast player. Simply search Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And lastly, please visit the bottom of the episode notes to connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter in order to further the conversations occurring on this podcast. All right, Megan, it's almost time for our community to learn how you and the healthcare transformation team are partnering with health systems and payers across the nation to implement digital asynchronous video technology that delivers more effective and efficient care. But first, what's that one piece of advice that you would give to others who are passionate about reimagining the health of our world? Yeah, great question, Mike. So my response would be just start doing it, (laughs) right? And I think the biggest thing in healthcare is taking action. And I think more people need to take action because I think a lot of us know what the optimal healthcare system can and should look like. And so just taking action and just doing it, which I know I just stole from Nike, but you know. (laughs) But it's true, right? Before we hit record on this podcast interview, I even said that to you, Megan, you know, we're 200 plus episodes in and I had no idea what the heck I was doing when I turned the microphone on. So just start before you're ready. Just start doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Learn while you go. And I think that's important, Megan. You know, you can get wrapped around the proverbial axle in healthcare pretty quickly given how complex the industry is, but just start getting out there and doing it, learning along the way, make those pivots where needed. I think that's incredibly important. Having that type of mindset, has that been helpful for you and the team while you build HCT? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because it's like you said, and I think for us, we're building something that really hasn't existed in healthcare, which we'll talk more about async video tech and what we're doing. It is the most simple solution and people always comment on this, but really it hasn't been done, right? And so you gotta start somewhere and we build and we grow and we implement and we help organizations learn from doing it. And so, you know, it's just, you gotta take action and you just go. <laughs> I absolutely love it, Megan, you're spot on. You know, you mentioned it's easy and it's simple, but really when you see products that look easy and look simple, you know that there was a lot of complexity to get there in the first place. Yeah. So I can't wait to hear more about that and the backstory of HCT and all the good things happening in the camp of your organization. We're gonna discuss all that and more after we get back from thanking our community champion sponsor. Located in Denver, Colorado's nationally ranked River North District, Catalyst is a healthcare innovation campus that brings together stakeholders from across the industry to accelerate innovation and drive real, lasting change our nation desperately needs. From established organizations to startups, from accelerators to advocacy organizations, and from medical schools to global companies, everyone at Catalyst works side by side to create, develop, refine, and bring to market cutting-edge innovations that will fundamentally transform healthcare as we know it. With industry leaders like Medical Group Management Association, Olive, Medical Solutions, UC Health, 
Cirrus MD, and many others calling Catalyst home, along with innovative pioneers visiting from across the nation. Catalyst continually fosters their foundational belief that collaboration and partnerships will move the healthcare industry forward. To virtually tour Catalyst and claim your space on campus or host an upcoming event, visit CatalystHealthTech.com or visit the top of the episode notes and click on their link. All right, we are back with Megan Necrobecki, CEO of Healthcare Transformation. Megan, you set us up on the front end. Just get out there and do it. Start building, start transforming healthcare because there's a lot of pivots along the way and that's okay, right? Nothing, uh, you know, in regards to innovation that I've seen through my career, that's never a straight line. And that's okay because this is a very complex industry. So can't wait to discuss that journey you and the HCT team have been on. It's been now over four years. That's an exciting milestone to hit. That's incredible. A large majority of companies don't even get out of year one or two. So I can't wait to hear also the founding story, how it came to be in the first place. You've had a storied career even before launching your own company. So we're going to discuss that, hear how all the good things are happening with the HCT team right now in the marketplace and where you see things heading as well. Then before we let you go, we also got to find out ways how we can be helping you and the team out because this is an incredible community rally around the podcast. But for now, Megan, let's take it back, rewind the clock for us a bit. And how did HCT come to view in the first place? Did you know you were going to be an entrepreneur? How did this all happen? Where were those aha moments? Hit us with the backstory of HCT. Yeah, of course. So I will say, no, I never thought that I would become an entrepreneur. That was never the goal. (laughs) I've actually, I've always been really passionate about healthcare. Grew up in the Midwest. I'm originally from Minnesota. Was pre-med in undergrad at Wisconsin and then went on to get a master's in public health from Johns Hopkins. And I would say it was in my years there where I first started to have this idea, you know, and this understanding that, you know what, U.S. healthcare is really complicated and most folks don't understand it (laughs) and don't know how to navigate care. And as I went in my career, so I've spent my career in healthcare operations from a consulting standpoint, largely in the value-based care sphere. But again, just everywhere I went and all the work that I was doing, it was very clear that patients do not understand how to navigate care. So I already had this kind of idea in my mind that, you know, experts should be doing a better job at educating patients. It was really when, so I was recruited by the UCLA health system. So I was out east for quite some time. The UCLA health system recruited me out here to Los Angeles. And I was managing their value-based care, systems improvement, analytics work, and really being inside the system. That's where it came to me that not only do patients not know how to navigate care and where to go and what to do and when to do it, but that really we're putting the burden on the shoulders of the clinicians and the staff who already have so much to do and are so burnt out, but we just continue to put more and more on their shoulders to say, you guys have to tell the patients how to navigate care. And so I was seeing all of these kind of issues at first hand. Meanwhile, I'm in Los Angeles and digital streaming video is everywhere, right? We're surrounded by the entertainment industry. TikTok is blowing up. YouTube is blown up all the digital streaming platforms. This is when we're losing cable, right? And it's Disney Plus and it's Netflix and it's Hulu and Peacock and all of these digital streaming platforms. And so I just had this vision that we should be using digital streaming video in healthcare because we know that video is the most engaging tool, right? To actually engage folks, to educate folks, for them to retain information. Video is highly more important than things like verbal and paper reading. I had this vision that we should be using this in healthcare, but really to do so not just from the perspective of supporting the patients in navigating care and improving improving their experience, but also to standardize, to scale the clinicians and staff, right? Because again, kind of from my background, I think of myself as a systems engineer. And so I'm in the system saying, how can we make sure that we get A plus quality every single time with every single care journey and every single doctor, nurse, staff person? And so the more that you can digitize and then automate and then scale with video, we can have an incredible amount of impact on patient care and patient outcomes and have a financial ROI there too. 
Well, we're going to discuss those outcomes and that impact on patients as well as their care teams, right? I mean, it's, it's really on both sides of the coin where that value is. And then, of course, as you mentioned, the, the financial side of all of this, we're going to discuss that in a bit here, Megan. But I got to ask you, your vision for streaming video in healthcare sounds compelling, sounds amazing. I got to imagine before you went all in on launching HCT, you went and had some conversations with the people that would be using this before you even go and build it. Did you have those conversations? And if so, what was the response like? Yes, you had this awesome vision, but what were the people on the ground who would be using this type of technology day in and day out? What was their response to your vision? Yeah, well, so I think A, I feel like I myself was one of those target people, (laughs) right? So I was being charged with doing things of making sure we're successful in our value-based care contracts and that we're streamlining operations and things like that. And so I knew from my perspective as an operations leader that I wanted that tool, right? And then also part of the issue was that there are video companies out there, right? And so there's also what I was seeing as a gap in the market. So there's companies out there that are video libraries, right, where you can license these libraries and then use that content in clinical care delivery. So these companies already exist and are being used, right? But the issue with those video libraries is that that's not customizable, right? And then so on the other side to the coin is that you can go hire video production crews, which this is what health systems and payers do. But those folks oftentimes are not healthcare operations experts, right? And so, and then there's also other components, which I can talk more about HCT and what we do with our interactive async video technology, but that's customizable, but there's no technology and services there. It's really just work for higher production. So I also was seeing this gap of in being in the trenches as an operations leader and knowing what we need to do, both from a payer perspective and from a provider perspective but then also knowing that there's a gap in the market where the thing that we truly need doesn't yet exist for us. So I absolutely love it. Let's talk about that gap. Let's dive in a bit more on HCT. Hit us up with that elevator pitch. Who is HCT? (laughs) Yeah. So we are totally shifting the way care is delivered to be digitized and automated and standardized through async video tech. So it's really this idea of How do you mass message, use video as a population health tool where you're reaching thousands of patients at once, but also, like we talked about earlier, taking what is ultimately for the clinicians and staff being on verbal repeat like a broken record and taking that off their plate and standardizing and scaling. And so everything that we do is custom created for our client organizations. And so we produce the custom video. We are the technology that makes the video interactive. And I can talk more about that, but there's a lot of really cool technology functionality and analytics that go along with the videos. But then also there is a heavy services side where we are truly partnering with our organizations to help them implement async video technology successfully and see that financial ROI in the data and analytics, and then to continue them moving forward along the digital care journey to provide a better, more cost-effective, efficient experience, both for their labor force, but also for their patients and their families. And I think with this question, a lot of us probably already know the answer, but want to hear from you as the expert and seeing these pain points with your customers. You know, you mentioned it just a bit ago, Megan, this notion of having to do this over and over Mm -hmm. and over again, and it's just such a drain on our industry. What does that look like? Take us into the weeds a bit of like what it used to be or what it may, well, somewhat is still currently is and how you're solving for it. What does this mean doing things over and over and over again? What's that look like in the real world for the customers that you're working with? Yes. And honestly, I have a video that we should share with your audience. That is a great example of this where she's a nurse and she has to do all the pre-op to post-op training for her patients that are going through surgery. And she says the same thing over and over and over again every single day. And even after she did her whole kind of pitch of what she has to say every single time, I asked her afterwards, I said, what do patients say after you get done with that whole spiel? And she said, you know what? They look blank faced at me because they were just inundated with so much information 
And there's a lot of stats out there and saying that, you know, it's tricky for a patient to retain even 10% of what was just verbally conveyed to them. So I can definitely share that video, but that's a great example where, you know, when you think about cancer chemo training or surgery pre-op or pediatric patients who are going in for tonsillectomies, I mean, it just runs the gamut of what a nurse or a doctor or a staff person has to repeat. And like you were saying, I mean, it's a strain on the system, right? And then the other interesting thing, too, is if you think about time is money and you think about how much time they're spending on this stuff that is just redundant, that could be on video, that honestly the patient could watch at home in self-service and rewatch. And we do a ton of captioning, right? That's huge from a health equity standpoint. There's a lot of patients who don't speak English at home. And so to caption into their language so they truly understand the content. You know, so there's just so many benefits that can come from video, both for the clinicians and for the families. I mean, I know I'm an N of one and I've, you know, I say this humbly, I've given my entire career to healthcare. I feel pretty literate uh, given my many years of being in healthcare and innovation. And our son, we recently had to take into the hospital. And to your point, Megan, we had a nurse that went through so much information. What did she say there? What did, what did she mean by that? And like I said, I've been in the industry my whole career and still did not retain everything. Yep. Let's go back to to that nurse persona, Megan, I think you hit something here that I want to go into a little bit even deeper. Obviously, if we extrapolate that out, that those experiences of doing something over and over and over again that can be digitized and then at scale, what does that look like in regards to the constraints it creates on the industry? And then, of course, the dollar cost, the number of hours spent in that environment. Let me ask you in regards to that nurse persona type, Megan, that you just described, what is that now allowing that nurse to do given she has, he or she has these tools? Is it freeing her up to higher presence of their licensure? What does that look like now giving that time back to them? Yeah, well, and it's so it really depends on the content of the video too, and what that kind of redundancy or the point of the video, but so you can look at it in different ways because one is that, yes, it could just replace her time, right? Even if she's there with the patient, but she presses play on the video and goes and does something else while the patient's listening, right? So there's still an opportunity to replace her time. But a lot of times it's really interesting too. A lot of times we're using it to augment, to improve the efficiency or improve the productivity. So I'll actually give you a totally different example that's really, really interesting and really useful is that we're working with a ton of different organizations from CHI Health, Sutter Health, some of these big organizations that are trying to get patients patients in for care gaps, right? Where the patient is attributed to you, you know that they need something, let's get them in and engage them, right? But the status quo in healthcare is to call the patient, right? And how many patients actually answer the phone? How many patients when they do answer the phone are like, oh yeah, of course. No, they're like, who are you? Why are you calling me? Can I trust you? Why do I need this? Right? And so- Leave me alone. (laughs) Yeah. So we've totally flipped it on its head and digitized it into a modern engaging video that gets pushed out to those patients and then the patient's inbound schedule. And so what you can see there is in this case, A, from a scheduling perspective, you're improving the efficiency and effectiveness of those schedulers, right? That instead of them having to make a cold call, they're making a warm call perhaps back to the patient who said, hey, I want this. So that's one area. And then from the nurse perspective, really we want those nurses, these organizations are trying to make sure that the nurses are at full productivity. And so that also helps because we're engaging those patients and getting more scheduled, that those nurses are at full productivity and they have a patient who comes into that visit fully prepared because they watched a video. So they know, oh, I need to bring my medications with me and I need to do X, Y, and Z. I need to bring my advanced directive with me if I have one, you know? So that's all in the video of what to expect for your visit. So we're also improving the quality of the visit that's actually happening, which is incredible. Fantastic example. Thank you for sharing that, Megan. Also, you mentioned a bit ago this notion of proven out ROI. What does that mean? Can you describe that a bit? What does that look like? So you mentioned like a Sutter Health, right? Huge health system in in the Northern California region. Amazing health system, by the way. What does it look like for a Sutter to experience and to see the ROI of what you just described? Yes. So again, the financial ROI is always dependent on the project itself and what we're trying to target with the async video tech. 
for example, in the care gap example that I just gave, right? There's a cost perspective to the labor force of making sure that everyone is fully productive and efficient. So there's that financial ROI, but then oftentimes there's also a revenue financial ROI, right? So whether you're looking at this from a fee-for-service standpoint or from a value-based care standpoint, we also help our client organizations calculate out that financial ROI that they're seeking that, okay, if we increase the show rate of this appointment by 20%, well, then what does that look like for value-based care revenue? Because we've improved the metric performance, but then what does that look like for fee-for-service revenue as well, right? So just a couple of examples, but really it depends on the organization. We have organizations, for example, we have surgery centers out in New York where their CEO is so awesome, very passionate about the patient experience. And so he's getting a huge financial ROI because he's hyper-focused on digitizing being consumer centric in that we're getting this information to them in a form that they want, honestly. And they've actually gotten comments from patients of, I loved the videos. They were so nifty and I watched them with my daughter. And, you know, it's incredible what you can do for the patient experience, not to mention patient compliance, right? So even when you're thinking about things like surgery compliance, if a patient isn't compliant and they eat before their surgery, guess what? The surgery is canceled. That's bad for the organization and the system and that's lost revenue, but it's also poor experience for the patient. So, well, guess what? We can better improve their compliance with video and making sure that they get the information and can rewatch it and watch it in their language and things like that. Absolutely. And also, Megan, let's, you know, we're laggards in many, many areas in healthcare. We all know that, and it is what it is. I, I know it's a very risk adverse environment, but this notion of, and you mentioned it earlier, this notion of async video has been with us in our own personal lives for quite some time. We engage with these types of technologies pretty much daily, right? Yep. And, you know, and this is something you and I talked about before we started recording the interview today is that the notion of async video, I don't think it has still even hit its full potential yet within healthcare, which is very exciting, right? We have a long way to go, but that then shows how much opportunity is still in front of us in regards to these types of technologies and how we leverage them within the industry. So with that, Megan, let's take the crystal ball off the shelf for a little bit. What does it look like in the next two to three, three to five years, not just for the industry at large, but where HCT is heading as well? Yeah. So I would say what I see in the crystal ball is we're just going to continue to go further and further down the path of digital not only with video, but also how we communicate with patients. And I will say all of our client organizations, it is so cool to watch them start to implement async video tech in one area, see the success and then be like, next, you know, and it's just only going to continue to grow. But what's also very cool is that simultaneously, they're building out their digital infrastructure, right? So think their ability to text with patients. Because when you think about it, text is hands down the most successful way to get in front of people, but a text message is 160 characters, right? And so what's amazing that we can do with our organizations is that they can send a text that includes a link to the video message. And so, cause you can't, if you saw how long a two minute message would be by text, but you include that video message, which as we know is more engaging anyway to watch a video. And so it's just incredible what we can do when they can combine the ability to text, to email, to send a patient portal message but to include that video message in the messaging that is sent out. And so we're doing a lot with our client organizations to really improve what that digital infrastructure looks like and how they communicate so that they can continue to be more and more successful with engaging their patients in the way that is consumer centric and the way that we want to be communicated with. Yeah, absolutely. Well, healthcare, giddy up, let's go, because these technologies are here. They're ready for our use. We use them in so many other facets of our life. There's no reason why we can't be doing this in healthcare uh, because you know as well as I do, Megan, it makes a heck of a uh, better consumer experience all the way around as well. And you've highlighted that so brilliantly within this episode. So Megan, let's, we'll put the crystal ball on the, back on the shelf for a bit. We'll bring it back to today. We have an incredible community rallied around this podcast. They are always looking to help incredible innovators and entrepreneurs just like yourself. So with that, what's one problem need or question that you have that our community can be helping you with? Yeah, you know, I would say the biggest thing right now is just getting the word out and getting people to really see 
how we can use video in healthcare, which honestly, it's just, it's shifting thinking. So I can't even tell you, we talk to people all day, every day. And every single time we do, they are like, wow, this is amazing. This makes so much sense. Oh my gosh, especially if they're a nurse or a physician by background, they totally get it. (laughs) And so everyone is always on board, always sees the value. And every single time, they say, oh, I would have never thought of this. And you're, and they're always saying, you're exactly what we needed. We just didn't know we needed you. It's very cool. And so I would say that's our biggest mission is that, I mean, we're on a mission to completely shift the way we deliver healthcare. And that means just getting the word out and making sure that people realize that, you know, this is a solution to a problem that, you know, they've known about this problem for years, but they just never thought about such a simple solution (laughs) to solve that problem. Yeah. And again, it's not that foreign, right? We use these types of technologies in our everyday lives. Just look around your own daily experience. It's already part woven into your daily fabric of life, right? So there's no reason why we shouldn't be doing this within healthcare as well. So getting the word out. Absolutely. So you know, with these community members that want to help with that, Megan, how do they get a hold of you? Social media handles, websites, or otherwise, how do they find you online? Yeah, so best place is the website. So hctdigitalcare.com. And then definitely connect with me as well, right? So I'm on LinkedIn. I'm pretty active there. So always feel free to connect. But I would say, yeah, the website and LinkedIn, and then there's easily ways that you can connect with us to schedule time to chat to if so desired. <laughs> well, easy enough in our episode notes for everybody tuning in and your favorite podcast player, just simply scroll down to the episode notes. Those contact points for Megan and the HCT team will be in there. You can also, of course, head over to our free global online community at passionatepioneers.com. There will be a post for Megan's episode where you can leave feedback, suggestions, or otherwise, and find those contact points for Megan and the team. Again, over at passionatepioneers.com. Megan, what an exciting conversation. This is These are the types of technologies and innovations that we need now more than ever in healthcare. Love the story. We're going to continue to follow the journey. I'm going to have to ask, where are they now kind of episode in the future here? But as we wind down today, Megan, we have one more piece for you before we cut you loose. It's a fill in the blank. I'm a passionate pioneer because? I am a passionate pioneer because I want to change healthcare. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Well, Megan, thank you so much for taking a pit stop today and being on our podcast and sharing the incredible story of how it came to be and where you are today and where you're heading tomorrow with the HCT team. What a wonderful story. Thank you for being with us today. Yeah, thank you so much, Mike. It was a pleasure. Thank you for joining us today on Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. We'd love to hear your feedback about the podcast so we can continue to improve this community and to further support the pioneers being featured. Lastly, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast and invite your friends and colleagues to join us. This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you back with us during our next episode.